26 Sunday in ordinary time, you see our responsibility towards the underprivileged. Pope Francis, through the encyclical Evangelii Gaudium, invites all Christian faithful to respond to the gospel, to live it more fully and more deeply, to reach out to the poor and broken, to end justice and to build peace and to find joy in all of it. He tells us in many places in this encyclical to have the preferential option to the poor. For example, in number 48, he tells us that we have to state without mincing words that there is an inseparable bond between our faith and the poor. May we never abandon them. Also in number 191, he tells us that in all places and circumstances, Christians, with the help of their pastors, are called to hear the cry of the poor, seeing their poverty, hearing their cries, and knowing their sufferings. We are scandalized because we know that there is enough food for everyone, and that hunger is the result of a poor distribution of goods and income. He also tells us again in 198, that is why I want a church which is poor and for the poor. Pope Francis has pointed out clearly to the scandal of poverty in a world of plenty as a piercing moral challenge for the church and the whole human community. They are both assertions by the Pope and the readings of today are so soul searching. Today again, the prophet Amos, just like last week, hits very hard on the rich and even extend woes to those who enjoy being rich and forget the suffering. He doesn't say it is bad to be rich. He says those who enjoy being rich and forget the suffering. Similarly, Jesus, through the parable of Lazarus and the rich man, shows us again our obligation towards the poor. There is therefore a very important question. Do the wealthy have the obligation to help the poor? Our readings are very clear. The answer is yes. We cannot neglect the poor around us. As persons of God, we do not have to create an abyss between ourselves and the many Lazaruses in our world today, putting ourselves among the diversest people still roaming the earth. Some scientific findings have shown that in a world of plenty, the number of human beings dying or suffering from hunger, malnutrition, and hunger-related diseases is staggering. According to the World Bank, over one billion people, that is at least one quarter of the world's population, lives in poverty. Over half of these people live in South Asia and most of the remainder in Sub-Saharan Africa and East Asia. Archbishop Desmond Tutu therefore strikes a warning, therefore brings to light and exhorts us in a plea for humanity and a recognition of both moral and physical interdependence. My humanity is bound up to yours, for we can only be human together. He tells us this in his Ubuntu philosophy, in his Ubuntu doctrine. Unfortunately, our society hasn't changed essentially since the time of Amos, that is like 750 years before Christ. Today's readings really challenge all of us, you and me. All of us are to be at one with Lazarus, who plays his hope in the Lord, sensitive to the needs of others as Amos, and the person of God whom Timothy would recognize. We pray for more justice in our world and especially 
for more love to reign. We are our brother's keepers. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.